Uh, this is going to be the second video in the series about the Ranger 185A. Um, so as you can see here, gotten a little bit more sanding done around the inside of the boat. Got all this pretty much flattened out good. Got some stuff masked off, just getting it ready. Start painting, um, remove some stuff. So back here, back here, I ended up actually having to cut off the back of the boat and here's why. So this spot right here, like although I was thinking that it just went straight down, right? So I was like, okay, no big deal. I'm gonna be able to get my pry bar down in, in there and scrape off everything. But if you look inside on both sides, you can see right there, it actually dips in, dips in right here. Like as you can see right there, it dips in. So there was not gonna be any possible way that I was gonna be able to get that with the pry bar. So I ended up actually cutting this back skin off of it um, and I grinded it all down and stuff and I've gotten a little bit of fiberglass work done just to cover those holes on the inside now and um, so I used a pretty little neat trick though to reattach the skin and get it lined back up so what I did as you can see just drill two little holes and uh, you can put some zip ties in there and that'll hold it straight where you need it. Um, and then obviously like when you cut a skin off, it's not gonna go back perfect. Um, in other words, like it'll never get lined back up exactly where it needs to be. But um, all I did was I have a grinder with a flapper wheel on it. This little flapper wheel, it's like a uh, sandpaper. I took that and basically shaved it down to where it's pretty flat. So basically, yeah, I mean, it's gonna end up looking flat once I get it all sanded down and everything and do the final <coughs> coat of fiberglass on it. But uh, so I put the zip ties on it and took the grinder and smoothed it down, laid some fiberglass. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty strong. So basically, you're going to want to put the zip ties on there and maybe like space it out by a foot. That way you can get it tacked on with the fiberglass. And once you, once you get it tacked on, you'll be able to remove the zip ties and then do your final fiberglass layup. Um, I'm probably not even actually going to do the final layup until I get the transom poured, but I just wanted to get it back on there strong enough to hold everything together. Um, cause once, once you, if you do all your cleaning right and everything, once you pour that C cast in there, it's going to be super strong. Um, because the C cast is going to bond to both of the skins basically. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm going to try to get a decent video of actually pouring the C cast in and then, um, yeah, so the transom 
the top cap of the transom uh, was like the fiberglass was actually kind of rotten. I don't know how, um, but it was just super brittle and cracking and stuff like that. So it's actually about two inches shorter than it needs to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the C-cast in and then I've got a brand new two by four and I'm going to pour the C-cast up to the level that I want it. And then I'm going to cap it off with a two by four that is coated in fiberglass. Um, so the C-cast manufacturer recommends that you don't, uh, that you get all of the wood out of there. Um, and they don't recommend it as a partial repair, but the only thing the two by four is going to be doing is basically just to cap it off and make it level, um, for the motor mount plate to have somewhere to sit on. Um, so I just, I couldn't, I tried and I tried and I tried and I could not find a good way to build the fiberglass up two inches. So that's what I'm going with. I'm going to basically cover all the holes and that's going to be that. I'm going to pour the C-cast hopefully later this evening and we'll see how it goes. But All right, as you can see, I've gone all the way around that seam and gotten it fiberglass back together. Also, I've gotten all the holes patched up. You don't want this stuff leaking out anywhere. Third, this is what I've come up with. Well, I didn't come up with it. I've seen the idea before online because obviously I've done research on uh, using the C-cast. This is what I've come up with though as a funnel. I just got it kind of duct taped to keep it in place. It's pretty solid, like it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna be able to pour it in. Um, yeah, so we're about to start pouring. I'm gonna let the fiberglass keep on setting up. It's been about two hours since I fiberglassed everything back together. And man, look how close I got that seam back to being straight. I mean, it's, once I sand everything, you'll barely be able to tell, you know? So yeah, using that zip tie method, man, with the, the two holes on both sides and just zip tying it together, that thing is like almost foolproof for something like this uh, to be able to get it lined back up right. So yeah, anyways, we're about to start pouring, so stay tuned. One important thing that I forgot to mention, whenever you're doing fiberglass work, uh, there's going to be a lot of dust. I mean, look at all this. See that, all that dust from grinding it? I mean, it's everywhere, dude. So yeah, you're gonna wanna use some solvent like this. I mean, I'm, I'm sure this isn't probably the best thing that you can use, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, no residue for one. So it's basically, you wanna get everything as clean as possible. And that's why I ended up cutting the cap of the transom off. So, I mean, I'm sh you don't have to do it that way. But for me, I mean, I want the boat to be as safe as possible and strong as possible. It's going to have 150 horsepower hanging on the back of it. So, yeah. Uh, once you get everything basically prepped and ready to go, what I did, I poured that down both sides of the transom enough to, you know, go all the way down both skins and then i took my shop vac on blow mode instead of suck that's what she said and i basically just air dried it and everything after um i blew most of that stuff out of there so yeah that's another thing that you might want to think about doing just i mean if you're spinning you know by the time you buy all the fiberglass stuff and everything i mean you got almost 750 to a thousand dollars um in this repair so 
yeah, I mean, take the extra time and do it as right as you possibly can. Glasses, double bag, that's pretty nice. Get it out of that stuff. Probably gonna pour about half of this in and mix it up first. Alright, I don't have a regular mixer, but this is just a fishing rod holder that I attach to my drill. Get up inside this bucket. Now this stuff is pretty expensive, so I'm trying to get every little bit that I can into the boat. Plus, now I got a free bucket. All right, so
is much closer over to the side as possible. Right? That way, when I pour the second bucket, there'll be room for it to flow nice and easy. I want to try to get that hardener mixed in there a little bit. That way I can make sure it's fully mixed in before I start putting the chopped strand in there. Slowly. 
shaking a funnel trying to get worked in there good. It's not right. So this stuff doesn't set up like super, super quick. So that a little bit left in my funnel, which is good. I'd rather have a little bit extra. Bondo scraper, taking out the excess up out of here, and just beating it over where there's some light spots.
get dropping off the bat, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Got plenty left. And there you go. She's full up to the top. It looks like I ordered exactly the right amount. That two buckets turned out fantastic. All right, so I got my two by four in that I wanted to put in. Got some clamps, clamping it down because this piece right here where the motor actually mounts has to be a certain width to get that metal plate back over it. And uh, the reason I use the two by four is because when the transom was actually, when the transom started getting rotten and everything, the I think the motor basically cracked it all to pieces. And so I it wasn't gonna be like reliable. And you can see from this side, So it was going to be like almost impossible to build it up the extra two inches that I needed <clears throat> with the fiberglass because it's like if you don't have anything to attach it to and the fiberglass just falls down. So what I came up with was just putting a two by four on the top. Um, I realized that the two by four has a possibility of rotting out, but it's going to be completely covered with fiberglass. Um, it's not going to be able to get any moisture in it, basically. So... And then, obviously, if you seal your motor mount bolts up really good, um, yeah. I mean, so I, I don't feel like it's going to rot out or anything like that. I mean, maybe like 50 years from now, but this boat won't even matter in 50 years. So, yeah, that's basically what I came up with. I uh, tapped it down in there with a hammer, got some clamps going, and... Uh, yeah. So tomorrow we'll come on back out here to the garage and I will show you guys uh, smoothing it down and we'll lay some fiberglass over it and then get the cap back on. All right. So I got everything glassed in. I just laid it still wet. Man, that skin went on there good, man. <laughs> 